Greetings, fellow detectives. Wizard Kitten here, bringing you a new Nancy Drew analysis video. Today's video is brought to you by the patrons over at Mystique Manor and by all the official fellow detective channel members. If you too would like to support the channel and gain access to exclusive features, check out patreon.com slash wizardkitten to become a patron or click join next to the subscribe button to become an official fellow detective. Most of the time, the most exciting part of a mystery story is the culprit reveal. Part of the fun of reading, watching, or playing a mystery is trying to see if you can discover the culprit before the end of the game. In my opinion, a well-written mystery has all of the clues required to support a culprit reveal, and the best written mysteries have all of the clues, but manage to fool us or keep the culprit secret until the very end. In other words, I think the most successful mysteries are those where the culprit reveal is a huge surprise, but upon reflection, you can always see the evidence. As a whole, I think the Nancy Drew games do an excellent job of this. It's relatively rare that, upon a first playthrough, I got to the end and was confident in the culprit. I must admit that part of this has to do with the fact that I played many of the Nancy Drew games when I was a kid, meaning that I wasn't thinking terribly hard about who the culprit might be and was mostly just trying to successfully complete the game. Therefore, I got much better at correctly guessing culprits before the reveal, late into the Renaissance era and into the modern era. This may not be the case for you, especially if you only started playing the Nancy Drew games as an adult. But regardless, this has been my experience. So here's my list of the six Nancy Drew culprits that I correctly guessed before the reveal. From this point forward, please note that there will, obviously, be culprit, character, and plot spoilers for the following Nancy Drew games in chronological order. You have been warned. First, Detective Beach and Secrets Can Kill Remastered. Now, I have not personally had the pleasure of playing the original Secrets Can Kill, but I have watched walkthroughs of it and know the ins and outs just as much as if I had played it. So, when I played the remastered version for the first time and realized there was an additional character, I immediately knew that he would end up being the culprit. Why would they go through the trouble of adding in an additional character that wasn't in the original game if he wasn't going to be the culprit and need to be animated for the end confrontation? It genuinely would have been weird if they added Detective Beach as a whole new character and he somehow wasn't the culprit. Needless to say, I was on to this creep from the start, never even thinking to suspect any of the other characters despite all of their motives. Next, Dwayne Powers in Stay Tuned for Danger. This was the first game in the series and one of very few where players get to guess the culprit before the ultimate reveal. Therefore, even as a youngin, I was given an opportunity to both guess the culprit and remember whether or not I was correct. And I was. I think this is because the game really sets it up for Dwayne Powers to be the obvious culprit. Once we've uncovered certain pieces of evidence and actually spoken with the man, it's clear that he's dangerous, unhinged, and guilty. In his office, we find evidence of his explosive plans and evidence of his money difficulties. His hate for Rick is clear, and furthermore, we have direct video evidence of him sneaking around WWB Studios disguised as Owen Spader. A very unconvincing disguise, I might add. This video was what really clinched it for me. The puzzle pieces all fit together too clearly. It had to be Dwayne. Speaking of Dwayne, next up is Johnny Roll in Ransom of the Seven Ships. My biggest personal gripe of this game, and I have many, is that there was only one possible suspect throughout the entirety of the game. George did not kidnap Bess, and Cuckoo and the Monkeys did not kidnap Bess. There is only one physically animated character, Johnny Roll. The game tries to get us to believe that there are mysterious other people on the island, or that the Gibsons, the owners of the resort, could somehow be involved. But we never physically see any other people, or hear any other people, or encounter any other people in any way. 
Given the fact that it's costly and time-consuming to animate characters, it was clear that resources were spent on the monkeys and cuckoo, and that Johnny Roll was our guy. Yes, there is a special reveal that Dwayne Powers was actually Johnny Roll in disguise, which I did not guess before the end because I had not played Stay Tuned for Danger yet. This is precisely why I do not like returning culprits, but I still maintain that I correctly guessed who the culprit was. It was Johnny Roll, even if he had a different name by the end. Why Nancy ever trusted him is beyond me. Fourth, Anya Mittelmeier from The Captive Curse. This is another game that allows us to guess the name of the culprit before the ultimate reveal, and I remember very clearly getting it right on my first attempt. I also remember being quite confident in my answer, mostly through process of elimination. Lucas was automatically not the culprit because he and the monster were both seen in the same place at the same time more than once. By the end of the game, Renata hardly seemed suspicious. The subplot with the scarf builds real empathy with her, and explains why she always follows rumors of the monster. Additionally, she's quite old, and the monster is pretty spry. Similarly, by the end of the game, Carl really just feels like a lovable goof. What we do know is that Carl doesn't appear to have lied to us about anything. He hid the accident from us, but when we ask him about it, he tells us. Anya, on the other hand, lied about an awful lot, and was a lot more defensive and angry about it. Ultimately, she seemed the most suspicious, and was relatively easy to guess as the culprit. Fifth, Brenda Carlton from Alibi and Ashes. I knew within the first half hour of the game that Brenda was the culprit. Every interaction with Brenda felt like an exercise in futility. She's constantly on the attack or the defensive, refusing to answer questions and instead manipulating people into answering her questions. She's disdainful and rude and is literally waiting for Nancy outside of the burning town hall microphone at the ready. She knew Nancy was inside, and she knew Nancy would be coming out. Everyone else at the scene, Alexi, Deirdre, and Tony, had the decency to at least be surprised when Nancy stumbles out of the town hall, but not Brenda. It was just so obvious from the start that she was guilty, but it was further made obvious when Nancy is able to find evidence against everyone besides Brenda first. Of course, the game wants to elongate the finding of incriminating information, but the complete lack of evidence against Brenda until after everyone else looks sus makes it very obvious that she is actually the one that we should be investigating. Finally, Victor Lawsett from The Deadly Device. While I may have known within the first half hour of Alibi and Ashes that Brenda was the culprit, I knew within the first minute that Victor Lawsett was the culprit of the deadly device. My reasoning was simple. Never in the history of the Nancy Drew PC games was a phone friend ever given enough attention to be animated. The game starts with the Nancy Drew version of a FaceTime call with the person who hired us to solve the murder, Victor Lawsett. That has never happened before, and it hasn't happened since. It was just so obvious to me that if he was an important enough character to be animated, then he would be showing up at the lab sooner or later, and how suspicious would it be when he did? As the game progressed, all of the evidence we collected only confirmed my suspicions. His anger issues, Deirdre's surprise at us getting hired, his weird obsession with the guilt of all the other characters, and most importantly, his opportune arrival right when Ryan discovers that the security video has been tampered with and the murderer has been alerted. He was so suspicious to me from the beginning, but only further confirmed the farther along we got. So there you have it, fellow detectives, the six culprits that I was able to guess before the end of the game. It's possible that, had I been paying more attention or been actively attempting to guess the culprits when I was an amateur sleuth, that I could have figured out the culprits of my first few games as well, most of which, as I mentioned, were in the classical era. I don't therefore believe that the culprits are any easier to guess in any particular era. Rather, I think that your age and experience and the games that you happen to be playing as you become more experienced plays much more of a role in the guessability of the culprits. 
On that note, I would love to hear which culprits you were able to guess before the ends of the games. Did we share any in common? Were you surprised by the culprits that I was able to guess? What in your experience gives a culprit away? Let a wizard kitten know in the comment section down below. If you really enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that like button or tipping me for the video with a super thanks next to the download button right beneath the video. If you would like to come join a fantastic group of fellow detectives at Mystique Manor as a patron for the channel, gain access to exclusive content, and support the making of more content like this, please check out patreon.com slash wizardkitten. I also have channel memberships with exclusive badges and emojis to use during streams and in the comment section. If you'd like to support the channel by becoming an official fellow detective, click join next to the subscribe button. Please feel free to follow the channel on Instagram or Discord, linked in the description box down below. And as always, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more Nancy Drew and Sims 4 content. Thank you so much for watching, fellow detectives. I will see you soon.